In this video we're going to be looking at planning a clearance. When you watch the pros play in a match, it's quite common to see them repeatedly break and clear the table in one visit. They're able to do this because they're not only planning the clearance, but because they have the skills to be able to control the cue ball and execute the shots exactly as they planned. For the rest of us, this is obviously the ultimate goal, and we aspire to be able to achieve this. However, whilst we're still learning and developing as a player, it means that we have to accept the limitations of our own skill levels. I've seen plenty of pros that will tell you that they plan the entire clearance before hitting a single ball, plotting the order in which they will pot all of the balls and a fairly accurate positional plan from one ball to the next. Whilst this works for them because they have the skills to execute it, for lesser skilled players this approach can be very difficult to do and even has disadvantages. Small errors in cue ball control can quickly mean that your plans go out of the window. This can then have two adverse effects. Firstly, you'll tend to be harder on yourself because you haven't got the exact position you required and these negative thoughts will definitely have an impact on the rest of your game. Secondly, you'll find yourself attempting more and more difficult shots in an effort to try and get back on track with the original plan. This in turn gives you a greater chance of missing and makes cue ball control even harder still. The way I like to approach things is to take a far more fluid approach. I still look at every ball on the table looking for balls that might be tied up or difficult, but I don't plan a precise order for every single ball. The things I do look for up front are as follows. Firstly, which set of balls gives me the best chance to make the clearance? This is not just whichever colour I put off the break. Even if I put two or more balls of one colour, I might choose the opposite colour if they're easier to pot as a complete set. I then look at the black ball. Where does it pot? and which ball gives me the best chance of ending up with an easy pot on the black. I then look at which ball gives me the easiest start. You may not have many options on the first ball after the break, but it's also important to make sure that you pot that first ball if you're choosing colours, like I am here. Miss that first ball, and you're giving your opponent the opportunity to take the easier set. Finally, I look for any problem balls. Do I need to clear a pocket to be able to pot something? Is there a ball tight on the rail that might be tricky? Do I need to split up any clusters of balls? These are all things that I look to sort out early in a clearance and try not to leave them until last. So if we look at the table layout here, let's apply this set of rules before we start. Both sets of balls are fairly evenly split. However, the reds do have these two balls together at the top that are close together and one's fairly close to the cushion. They're not terrible, but they could be slightly tricky. We also only really have one opening red which would be this one to the top corner. Again, it's not too difficult, but it's a bit of a cut, and the white would be running either into the yellow or into these other balls at the top. The yellows, however, have several easy starters, and all the balls are in fairly open positions. So in this case, yellows would be the better choice. Then we look at the black. Because of the red behind it, it will most likely need to be potted into either the bottom left corner or the right middle. To get into a good position to make those pots, then we would either be looking to pot this ball last to finish to the middle, or this ball last to finish to the corner. Then we look at our opening ball. We have a choice of three fairly easy pots here, to the top right, the right middle, or the bottom corner. In terms of difficult balls, there isn't really too much to worry about here. The only one of slight concern would be this one to the side, which either needs to be a gentle drop to the middle, or a fairly accurate drop down the line. With those things in mind, I think the best option would be to take this as our first ball, leaving us on the trickier ball to the middle, and that would then leave us with this ball as our last one to get onto the black. Now, as I've said, a pro would probably then, using this information, plan the order of all the balls. So let's try and do that and see what happens when we try to execute it. So we've established ball one, and hit plain ball, we should end up about here for the ball to the middle. Then we gently roll the ball into the middle, leaving a straight on the ball into the bottom right hand corner. From here, we would screw back about a foot to leave us on the ball to the top right. This needs to be past the black, but short enough so that we have an angle to the left of that ball. 
We could then pop that ball with a little topspin to go into the cushion, finishing about here. This position needs to be such that we have a slight angle to stun this ball to the middle, leaving us fairly straight on the other ball to the left middle. We then have a straight pot screwing back a couple of inches. Finally, we can stun our last yellow to the middle, leaving us with a nice straight shot on the black to the bottom corner. So when I actually went for this clearance, I didn't have that complete plan in my head at all. I had decided on the best last yellow and the best first ball, but everything in between was approached with a far more flexible plan. So let's look at the clearance and see what actually happened. The first shot is successful and the position is spot on with the full clearance plan. The same with the second shot, and that's mainly because I've not really had anything to do with the white ball yet. The next shot I'm looking to screw back for the ball to the top corner, just as in the full plan. But I actually end up travelling too far and leave myself with an angle that will take the white to the right of the yellow. Now, as I said earlier, if I was following the full plan, I'd now be annoyed with myself for running out of position and the negative thoughts would start to creep in. I'd also be looking at how I could possibly force the position to try and get back on track, maybe trying to cheat the pocket a little or playing with excessive spin or pace. Because I'm allowing myself to be more flexible, I can simply play the shot in a way that gives me the best chance of potting it and then adapt the positions for the last few balls. From here I have a slight angle that gives a tangent line in this direction from the yellow. So stunning down to near the full plan position is not an option. I could try to play with lots of topspin and maybe a bit of left hand side to try and force the ball into the cushion and across somewhere close to the middle. However, this then decreases the chances of making the pot, which is something I try to avoid if I can. Another option would be to play the shot gently and then take the ball to the opposite middle instead. The only problem with this is that the white ball would then be heading down the table. This would in turn mean that we'd be heading up the table after the ball to the opposite middle and away from the black. The third option is to ignore the middle pocket and take this ball down to the bottom corner. It's a slightly harder pot that needs to be played accurately and softly, but it means we hardly need to do anything with the white ball. I can then drop the ball gently into the corner and end up nice and straight on the ball which I originally intended to be the last ball. I just got there in a slightly different way. Now I could either stun this and end up dead straight on the black, but personally I prefer a little bit of an angle, so I'm just playing a gentle plain ball shot to leave a slight angle on the black down to the bottom corner. So I'm not saying you shouldn't try and plan the whole clearance, and if you're good enough to do that, then that's fine. But as someone still developing as a player, it can be far better to keep things flexible. Don't give yourself extra pressures that may impact on your game. I'm still planning several shots at a time, but I allow this to constantly change and reassess any plan after every shot. The final thing I'd like to say on the subject of clearing the table is that you have to accept that it won't always come off. The downside to this is that if you clear most of your balls and maybe just leave your last colour or the black, then your opponent is then in the driving seat. They have lots of space to either go for the clearance themselves or they have lots of balls to snooker you behind. As a result of this, you can actually lose a lot more matches that you may not have lost if you'd taken a more tactical approach. Unfortunately, this is a trade-off and one you just have to accept. I personally have experienced seasons where I decided to be much more aggressive, believing I was capable of clearing the table. And although I seven-balled several opponents during the season, I lost a lot of matches against players that I probably should have beaten if I'd been a little bit more cautious. My personal view on this is that I enjoy the game more when I play aggressively 
and I'd like to be able to get to a standard where I can clear the table on a regular basis. However, I know plenty of other players who would much rather win games by approaching the game tactically, biding their time, covering pockets, etc. There's no correct approach to games, particularly at local league level, and it's just something that you need to decide what works best for yourself. If you want to see more practice routines and pool tutorials, then please remember to subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the equipment I use in this video, then there are links in the description below.